It began as Google DeepMind's most capable brain, a system that could understand language, interpret images, listen, and even watch video with uncanny skill. But now that brain has been given a body, what was once confined to screens and simulations is stepping into our world, looking through its own eyes, listening to your voice, and moving with purpose. They call it Gemini Robotics, a creation that does not just respond, but acts. You tell it what you want, it sees the world around it, makes a plan, and brings that plan to life in front of you. What is new here is that Gemini Robotics does not just run scripted moves, it is general, interactive, and dexterous all at once, the three qualities you need if you want a truly useful robot. General means it can handle situations it has never seen before, interactive means it can work with you in real time, responding to voice or changing environments without choking, Dexterous means fine motor skills, the kind of hand and finger control that lets you fold origami, pack a snack into a Ziploc, or slot a delicate piece into a game board. On the generality side, Google's benchmarks show Gemini Robotics more than doubled the performance of previous state-of-the-art vision language action models on comprehensive generalization tests. That includes dealing with brand new objects, following all kinds of natural language instructions, and adapting to completely new environments. In one demo, the robot was told to flip a red die so it matched a green die. No pre-programmed motion, just reasoning about what it saw and how to move it. In another, it was asked to slam dunk a basketball and it pulled it off even though it had never seen that exact ball or hoop before. The interactivity part is what makes it feel alive. If you move an object mid-task, Gemini instantly replans. In one clip, someone shifts fruit between containers while the robot is mid-action. It does not freeze or start over, it just updates its plan and carries on. The latency is low enough that you are seeing real-time responses at one time speed. That is important because so many robotics demos are sped up five times to look smooth. Here, it is genuinely running fast enough to be useful. Then there is dexterity. Using pretty basic grippers, Gemini Robotics can put glasses into a holder, manipulate game pieces, fold paper into an origami fox, even draw eyes on it in the right spot. The precision is impressive, especially considering that in robotics, fine manipulation usually demands expensive, complex hardware. The idea is that if the model can pull this off with simple arms, it will be even more capable on platforms with higher degrees of freedom, like humanoid hands. Google's also built-in adaptability across embodiments. They trained mainly on a bi-arm platform called Aloha 2, but have shown it running on Franca arm setups used in labs, and even on Aptronic's Apollo humanoid robot with five-fingered hands. That portability means you could treat the AI model almost like a software update, drop it onto a new robot, give it minimal data, and it starts performing complex tasks. Alongside Gemini Robotics, DeepMind rolled out Gemini Robotics ER for embodied reasoning. This is the same underlying intelligence, but with enhanced spatial understanding. It can do perception, state estimation, spatial reasoning, planning, and code generation all in one. If it needs to pick up a mug by the handle, it identifies the right grass, plans the trajectory, and executes without you breaking it down into sub-steps. In end-to-end -end tests, ER scored two to three times higher success rates than standard Gemini 2.0. It can even generate low-level controller code in Python or other languages and learn from a handful of human demonstrations when code alone is not enough. They have thought about safety too. DeepMind has experimented with what they call a robot constitution, natural language rules inspired by Asimov's laws, to guide the AI away from unsafe or unethical actions. They have built a framework to generate these constitutions automatically and created the ASIMOV dataset to test semantic safety in embodied AI. Internally, a Responsibility and Safety Council reviews deployments and they consult outside experts on societal impacts because putting a general purpose robot in a home or workplace raises obvious ethical questions. Now here's where things get even more interesting. DeepMind has just taken all of this and made a version that runs entirely on the robot. No cloud connection required. It is called Gemini Robotics on device. Same vision, language, action architecture, but optimized so it is small and efficient enough to execute locally. 
That means no dependency on a network, no latency spikes if the connection drops, and it works in places with zero internet factories with restricted networks, remote research sites, even security sensitive locations like healthcare settings. This on-device model still brings strong task generalization, natural language understanding, and fine motor control. It was trained on the Aloha robot, but has already been adapted to the Biarm Franca FR3 and the Apollo humanoid. On the Franca, it has handled things like folding clothes and doing assembly on an industrial belt. On Apollo, it has followed natural language instructions to manipulate both familiar and unseen objects in a general way. Out of the box, it can unzip bags, open containers, uncap markers, and more, all without touching the cloud. Google says you can adapt it to new tasks with just 50 to 100 demonstrations that is far lighter than the massive data sets traditional robotics would require. You can collect those demos physically or in Google's MujoCo physics simulator, then deploy the updated model back to the robot. Carolina Parada, who heads robotics at DeepMind, calls it a starter model for applications with poor connectivity, but even she admits they were surprised at how strong it is. Yes, the hybrid Cloud Plus device model is still more powerful, but for many use cases, this local version will be enough, and faster. Developers get access through a trusted tester program, along with a full software development kit. This is actually the first time DeepMind has released an SDK for one of its vision language action models. It lets roboticists evaluate and fine-tune the on-device system for their own hardware and environments. You can also integrate it with low-level safety critical controllers, since the on-device variant does not ship with the full semantic safety reasoning stack from the cloud model. DeepMind recommends replicating that if safety is a concern. From a hardware integration perspective, this adaptability is huge. The same model has been shown running on a bi-manual lab robot, an industrial arm setup, and a humanoid without redesigning the core AI. That flexibility is what could make general purpose humanoids actually viable outside of controlled demos. Instead of every company reinventing the wheel with their own task-specific training, you could drop a capable generalist brain into whatever robot chassis you are building. Performance-wise, Google claims the on-device system performs close to the cloud-based Gemini Robotics in benchmarks and beats other on-device models, though they did not name those competitors. In demos, the low latency inference is clear. Smooth actions, no perceptible pause between instruction and movement, even on fairly complex manipulations. If we zoom out, this whole Gemini Robotics push is about collapsing the gap between AI's reasoning ability and its physical embodiment. Until now, most AI progress has been in virtual environments, large language models, image generators, planning systems, but the real world is messy. Objects are not where you expect, lighting changes, people interrupt, things slip, a robot that can see, understand, and adapt without needing explicit reprogramming is a different category from the industrial arms we have had for decades. That is why the generalization benchmarks matter. More than doubling performance means it is not just memorizing tasks, it is reasoning about concepts. When you ask it to slam dunk a basketball, it is drawing on a conceptual understanding of what basketball is, what a slam dunk entails, and mapping that to whatever physical space and equipment it has in front of it. The same applies when it is asked to put bananas in a clear container versus a pink one. It recognizes the objects, understands the constraint, and adjusts. The embodied reasoning in the ER variant pushes that further. It does not just say pick up mug. It figures out the grip, the path, the forces, and executes while monitoring for changes. And because it can code, it can alter its own low-level control logic to better suit the hardware it is on, or learn from examples you provide. That is a big shift from static controllers to adaptive intelligence. Google's partnerships hint at where this could go. They are working closely with Aptronic, not just as a collaborator, but as an investor. Aptronic raised $350 million last month with Google on board. Other trusted testers include Agile Robots, Agility Robotics, Boston Dynamics, and Enchanted Tools. That means you could see Gemini-powered humanoids, quadrupeds, and other forms in very different settings, all benefiting from the same core intelligence. One subtle but important point, traditional reinforcement learning in robotics has been slow and brittle. 
generative AI changes that. By leveraging a multimodal world model like Gemini's, the robot can generalize from minimal input. Instead of running thousands of simulated variations until it figures out how to twist a cap, it can watch a few demos, understand the concept, and apply it to variations it has never seen. There is also a privacy and autonomy angle. Processing data locally means sensitive environments do not have to stream camera feeds or operational data to the cloud. That could be a deciding factor in healthcare, defense, or any regulated industry. It also means the robot keeps working even if the network is unstable, which is critical for time-sensitive tasks. From an industry perspective, this is the kind of platform shift people have been waiting for. One unified model, adaptable to multiple embodiments, running either with cloud augmentation or fully offline, able to learn from a handful of demonstrations with real-time interactivity and fine motor control, Combine that with partnerships across the humanoid robotics field, and you start seeing how these capabilities could spread quickly. For anyone following humanoids specifically, the Apollo robot is the standout here. Five-fingered hands, full-body mobility, now paired with an AI brain that can generalize, reason spatially, and adapt quickly. That is the kind of combination that moves you beyond staged trade show demos into useful everyday deployment. It is clear Google DeepMind is positioning Gemini Robotics as more than a research project. With both the full hybrid model and the on-device variant in the hands of trusted testers, plus an SDK to expand development, they are seeding the ecosystem. The pace of updates has been fast, and with this level of capability running locally, the next wave of humanoid robot demos could look very different from what we have been used to. That is it for today. I read all your comments, so if you have got thoughts, questions, or ideas for what you want to see next, drop them below. I go through every single one. And if you want to keep up with what is coming, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. See you in the next one.